Angel is saying to you, Father God, thank you for another day to serve you. I ask that you search my heart and mind and remove anything that does not please you. Give me your thoughts of peace and joy today so that I can learn to receive all you have for me today. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Father God, today I come boldly thanking you for your faithfulness in my life and for all you have done. You are worthy to be praised. I will bless you not only today but every day. Thank you for giving me the gifts, talents, and abilities to accomplish your will. I continue to put my trust and hope in you, knowing that you have already equipped me for my destiny. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. Father God, I pray today that you remove me from any negative environments I may dwell in and place me in an atmosphere of victory. Thank you for those in my life that constantly build me up versus tearing me down. Place more people around me that encourage me and challenge me to be the best I can be. Fill me with your favor. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Father God, thank you for reminding me that my efforts in whatever I endeavor is worthless unless strengthened by you. Remove any jealousy or envy I have that I may focus on my salvation and deliverance. Please allow the work I do to not only nourish my body but my soul as well. I intend to fulfill what it is you would have me to do. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Do not grow weary and lose heart. When you are dealing with difficulties that go on and on, it's easy to get so tired that you feel like giving up. Chronic problems can wear you out and wear you down. If you focus too much on these troubles, you're in danger of sliding into a black hole of self-pity or despair. There are several kinds of weariness. Unrelieved physical tiredness makes you vulnerable to emo exhaustion and spiritual fatigue losing heart. However, I have equipped you to transcend your troubles by fixing your eyes on me. I paid dearly for this provision by enduring the cross for you. Pondering my willingness to suffer so much can strengthen you to endure your own hardships. Worshiping me is a wonderful way to renew your strength in my presence. When you take steps of faith by praising me in the midst of difficulties, my glorious light shines upon you. As you persevere in focusing on me, you reflect my glory to others, and your trance formed into my likeness with ever-increasing glory. Remember that joy is not dependent on your circumstances. Some of the world's most miserable people are those whose circumstances seem the most enviable. People who reach the top of the ladder career-wise are often surprised to find emptiness awaiting them. True joy is a byproduct of living in my presence. Therefore, you can experience it in palaces, in prisons, anywhere. Do not judge a day as devoid of joy just because it contains difficulties. Instead, concentrate on staying in communication with me. Many of the problems that clamor for your attention will resolve themselves. Other matters you must deal with, but I will help you with them. If you make problem-solving secondary to the goal of living close to me, you can find joy even in your most difficult days. Come to me and listen. Attune yourself to my voice and receive my richest blessings. Marvel at the wonder of communing with the Creator of the universe while sitting in the comfort of your home. Kings who reign on earth tend to make themselves inaccessible. Ordinary people almost never gain an audience with them. Even dignitaries must plow through red tape and protocol in order to speak with royalty. Though I am king of the universe, I am totally accessible to you. I am with you wherever you are. Nothing can separate you from my presence. 
when I cried out from the cross, It is finished. The curtain of the temple was torn in two from top to bottom. This opened the way for you to meet me face to face, with no need of protocol or priests. I, the King of Kings, am your constant companion. Draw near to me with a thankful heart, aware that your cup is overflowing with blessings. Gratitude enables you to perceive me more clearly and to rejoice in our love relationship. Nothing can separate you from my loving presence. That is the basis of your security. Whenever you start to feel anxious, remind yourself that your security rests in me alone and I am totally trustworthy. You will never be in control of your life circumstances, but you can relax and trust in my control. Instead of striving for a predictable, safe lifestyle, seek to know me in greater depth and breadth. I long to make your life a glorious adventure, but you must stop clinging to old ways. I am always doing something new within my beloved ones. Be on the lookout for all that I have prepared for you. I am able to do far beyond all that you ask or imagine. Come to me with positive expectations, knowing that there is no limit to what I can accomplish. Ask my spirit to control your mind so that you can think great thoughts of me. Do not be discouraged by the fact that many of your prayers are yet unanswered. Time is a trainer, teaching you to wait upon me, to trust me in the dark. The more extreme your circumstances, the more likely you are to see my power and glory at work in the situation. Instead of letting difficulties draw you into worrying, try to view them as setting the scene for my glorious intervention. Keep your eyes and your mind wide open to all that I am doing in your life. Worship me only. Whatever occupies your mind the most becomes your God. Worries, if indulged, developed into idols. Anxiety gains a life of its own, parasitically infesting your mind. Break free from this bondage by affirming your trust in me and refreshing yourself in my presence. What goes on in your mind is invisible, undetectable to other people. But I read your thoughts continually, searching for evidence of trust in me. I rejoice when your mind turns toward me. Guard your thoughts diligently. Good thought choices will keep you close to me. This is the day that I have made. As you rejoice in this day of life, it will yield up to you precious gifts and beneficial training. Walk with me along the high road of thanksgiving, and you will find all the delights I have made ready for you. To protect your thankfulness, you must remember that you reside in a fallen world where blessings and sorrows intermingle freely. A constant focus on adversity defeats many Christians. They walk through a day that is brimming with beauty and brightness, seeing only the grayness of their thoughts. Neglecting the practice of giving thanks has darkened their minds. How precious are my children who remember to thank me at all times. They can walk through the darkest days with joy in their hearts because they know that the light of my presence is still shining on them. Rejoice in this day that I have made, for I am your steadfast companion. Trust me, one day at a time. This keeps you close to me, responsive to my will. Trust is not a natural response, especially for those who have been deeply wounded. My spirit within you is your resident tutor, helping you in this supernatural endeavor. Yield to his gentle touch. Be sensitive to his prompting. Exert your will to trust me in all circumstances. Don't let your need to understand distract you from my presence. I will equip you to get through this day victoriously as you live in deep dependence on me. Tomorrow is busy worrying about itself. Don't get tangled up in its worry webs. Trust me one day at a time. 
Accept each day exactly as it comes to you. By that, I mean not only the circumstances of your day, but also the condition of your body. Your assignment is to trust me absolutely, resting in my sovereignty and faithfulness. On some days, your circumstances and your physical condition feel out of balance. The demands on you seem far greater than your strength. Days like that present a choice between two alternatives giving up or relying on me. Even if you wrongly choose the first alternative, I will not reject you. You can turn to me at any point, and I will help you crawl out of the mire of discouragement. I will infuse my strength into you moment by moment, giving you all that you need for this day. Trust me by relying on my empow. Presence. Welcome. Challenging times as opportunities to trust me. You have me beside you and my spirit within you so no set of circumstances is too much for you to handle. When the path before you is dotted with difficulties, beware of measuring your strength against those challenges. That calculation is certain to rid you of anxiety. Without me, you wouldn't make it past the first hurdle. The way to walk through demanding days is to grip my hand tightly and stay in close communica, tie in with me, let your thoughts and spoken words be richly flavored with trust and thankfulness. Regardless of the day's problems, I can keep you in perfect peace as you stay close to me. Let thankfulness temper all your thoughts. A thankful mindset keeps you in touch with me. I hate it when my children grumble, casually despising my sovereignty. Thankfulness is a safeguard against this deadly sin. Furthermore, a grateful attitude becomes a grid through which you perceive life. Gratitude enables you to see the light of my presence shining on all your circumstances. Cultivate a thankful heart, for this glorifies me and fills you with joy. Lie down in green pastures of peace. Learn to unwind whenever possible, resting in the presence of your shepherd. This electronic age keeps my children wired much of the time, too tense to find me in the midst of their moments. I built into your very being the need for rest. How twisted the world has become when people feel guilty about meeting this basic need. How much time and energy they waste by being always on the go, rather than taking time to seek my direction for their lives. I have called you to walk with me down paths of peace. I want you to blaze a trail for others who desire to live in my peaceful presence. I have chosen you less for your strengths than for your weaknesses, which amplify your need for me. Depend on me more and more, and I will shower peace on all your paths. Let me teach you thankfulness. Begin by acknowledging that everything, all your possessions and all that you are belongs to me. The dawning of each new day is a gift from me, not to be taken for granted. The earth is vibrantly alive with my blessings, giving vivid testimony to my presence. If you slow down your pace of life, you can find me anywhere. Some of my most precious children have been laid aside in sick beds or shut away in prisons. Others have voluntarily learned the discipline of spending time alone with me. The secret of being thankful is learning to see everything from my perspective. My world is your classroom. My word is a lamp to your feet and a light for your path. Rest in me, my child forgetting about the worries of the world. Focus on me, Emmanuel, and let my living presence envelop you in peace. Tune in to my eternal security, for I am the same yesterday, today, and forever. If you live on the surface of life by focusing on ever-changing phenomena, you will find yourself echoing the words of Solomon. Meaningless, meaningless 
everything is meaningless. Living in collaboration with me is the way to instill meaning into your days. Begin each day alone with me so that you can experience the reality of my presence. As you spend time with me, the way before you opens up step by step, arise from the stillness of our calm, and gradually begin your journey through the day. Hold my hand in deliberate dependence on me, and I will smooth out the path before you. I am with you. I am with you. I am with you. Heaven's bells continually peal with that promise of my presence. Some people never hear those bells because their minds are earthbound and their hearts are closed to me. Others hear the bells only once or twice in their lifetimes, in rare moments of seeking me above all else. My desire is that my sheep hear my voice continually, for I am the ever-present shepherd. Quietness is the classroom where you learn to hear my voice. Beginners need a quiet place in order to keep their minds. As you advance in this discipline, you gradually learn to carry the stillness with you wherever you go. When you step back into the mainstream of life, strain to hear those glorious bells. I am with you. I am with you. I am with you. Thankfulness takes the sting out of adversity. That is why I have instructed you to give thanks for everything. There is an element of mystery in this transaction. You give me thanks, regardless of your feelings, and I give you joy, regardless of your circumstances. This is a spiritual act of obedience at times, blind obedience. To people who don't know me intimately, it can seem irrational and even impossible to thank me for heart-rending hardships. Nonetheless, those who obey me in this way are invariably blessed, even though difficulties may remain. Thankfulness opens your heart to my presence and your mind to my thoughts. You may still be in the same place, with the same set of circumstances, but it is as if a light has been switched on enabling you to see from my perspective. It is this light of my presence that removes the sting from adversity. Yesterday, we looked at Psalm 46.10, which instructs us to cease striving during the difficult times in our lives. That verse means we should stop trying to manipulate our circumstances and instead trust God and allow Him to work. Now, Understanding a scripture is one thing, but putting it into action in our lives can be something else entirely. So just how is a believer to be still? First, we must understand that the Heavenly Father is allowing us. If we believe that He is in control, then we must also believe that He has permitted these events to occur. Second, it may be hard to comprehend but there is a purpose behind our trials, even when life seems confusing and hopeless. The Lord won't allow hardships to come our way without good reason. Third, since there is a purpose for our hardships, they have the potential to ultimately be positive experiences. This doesn't mean everything will always work out perfectly according to our own standards, hopes, and plans but it does mean that if we respond correctly, we may look back on the experience as a catalyst for growth in our spiritual walk. In Romans 8.28, Paul says, And we know that God causes all things to work together for good to those who love God, to those who are called according to His purpose. You may have heard this familiar verse many times. But in order to maneuver successfully through the storms of life, you must understand its truth. God hasn't disappeared, and He isn't ignoring us. He has a purpose in everything, even the most challenging of circumstances. Jesus then said to them, I assure you, most solemnly I tell you, Moses did not give you the bread from heaven, 
What Moses gave you was not the bread from heaven, but it is my Father who gives you the true heavenly bread. John 6.32 Jesus said to ask God for daily bread. See Matthew 6.11. He also called himself the bread of life. See John 6.35. Seek God's direction in the morning to gather his daily words for you. You will feel well nourished all day long. Obey quickly if God tells you to do something. Even if God gives you a difficult task, don't put it off and dread it all day. Abraham rose early to offer Isaac on the altar. God blessed his obedience and provided an acceptable sacrifice in place of Isaac. See Genesis 22, 1-14. David rose up early in the morning to kill Goliath, and through him God delivered the Israelites from their enemies. See 1 Samuel 17, 20, 53. He will bless and deliver you, too. Trust me enough to let things happen without striving to predict or control them. Relax and refresh yourself in the light of my everlasting love. My love, light never dims, yet you are often unaware of my radiant presence. When you project yourself into the future, rehearsing what you will do or say, you are seeking to be self-sufficient, to be adequate without my help. This is a subtle common that it usually slips by unnoticed. The alternative is to live fully in the present, depending on me each moment. Rather than fearing your inadequacy, rejoice in my abundant supply. Train your mind to seek my help continually even when you feel competent to handle something by yourself. Don't divide your life into things you can do by yourself and things that require my help. Instead, learn to rely on me in every situation. This discipline will enable you to enjoy life more and to face each day confidently. Many people wanted to be near me to see my miracles and to hear what I would say. But most never came to know me. Today many think that because they call me Lord, they will be granted entrance into the kingdom. Though they may know about me, they haven't come to know me. When people know me, the direction of their lives changes from doing their own will to doing my Father's will. I know that you are often unsure of what His will is. You ask yourself, does He want me to do this or that or something else? You have wondered how you can know the Father's will. The answer is to abide in my words daily. They reveal the Father's will for every situation. Let the Holy Spirit teach you from my words, which not only reveal my Father's will but empower you to do His will. But when He, the Spirit of truth, comes, He will guide you into all the truth for he will not speak on his own initiative, but whatever he hears, he will speak, and he will disclose to you what is to come. He will glorify me, for he will take of mine and will disclose it to you. John 16, 13, 14. Nazb, the greatest words ever spoken, eternal life. Preopa 34, 42. Knowing God and knowing Christ. Apro 275, 77. Abiding in the words of Christ. Enjoy the warmth of my presence shining upon you. Feel your face tingle as you bask in my love light. I delight in you more than you can imagine. I approve of you continuously, for I see you cloaked in my light, arrayed in my righteousness. There is no condemnation for those who are clothed in me. That is why I abhor the use of guilt as a means of motivation among Christians. Some pastors try to whip their people into action with guilt-inducing sermons. This procedure can drive many people to work harder, but the end does not justify the means. Guilt-evoking messages can undermine the very foundation of grace in a believer's heart. A pastor may feel successful when his people are doing more but I look at their hearts. I grieve when I see grace eroding, with weeds of anxious works creeping in. 
I want you to relax in the assurance of my perfect love. The law of my spirit of life has set you free from the law of sin and death. Be still in my presence even though countless tasks clamor for your attention. Nothing is as important as spending time with me. While you wait in my presence, I do my best work within you, transforming you by the renewing of your mind. If you skimp on this time with me, you may plunge headlong into the wrong activities, missing the richness of what I have planned for you. Do not seek me for what I can give you. Remember that I, the giver, am infinitely greater than any gift I might impart to you. Though I delight in blessing my children, I am deeply grieved when my blessings become idols in their hearts. Subscribe to our channel to help us reach 2,000 subscribers. Share this video to your loved ones. Donate us. Super thanks to support us. Type Amen to affirm thank for watching.